Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Tuesday, July 26, 2022, 3 p.m., a little after 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll be having a time for change call tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. The journey to financial freedom starts the minute you decide you are destined for prosperity, not scarcity, for abundance, not lack. Mark Victor Hansen. We all strive, <clears throat> excuse me, we all strive for abundance, obviously. And uh, none of us care to exist in poverty. Um, many people get diverted or lost or confused, or just misinformed, and abundance, we, we don't look at it this way, unfortunately, abundance is the inherent nature of the universe. Abundance is the inherent nature of the universe. We live in a truly abundant universe where there is a plethora of things, ideas, love, money, friends, and opportunities all around us. Now, even though you may not feel it all the time, this abundant universe is always available to you right in the moment, in the now. And you need not search for abundance outside of yourself. It is a state of of being that can only be found from the journey within. This universe is always sending you loads of good energy, new ideas and people to help you tap into feeling this natural abundant state. To experience this abundance, Simply let go, that's a big one, let go of trying to achieve it. To experience this abundance, simply let go of trying to achieve it. Trust it is here now and gently practice receiving it. I, we, we've been trained to believe that you now we go, you got to go outside yourself to find abundance. You know, strive and crawl and grip and climb and so on and so forth. The word abundance comes from the Latin root meaning to move in waves, undulate and flow. To move in waves, undulate and flow. This means that to tap into abundance is to let yourself move undulate and flow with life become like the natural waves in the ocean and surrender to this water-like flow of energy inside you your real life is like a dancing river of energy that will continue on well after your body is gone to tap into this sweet fluidity inside find your breath and align yourself with its movement. It will lead you directly into the abundant flow that's here now. Your breath. If you truly want to become a massive channel of abundance, then only pay attention to what you are grateful and thankful for. We say that a lot. The more gratitude you have, the more abundance you'll attract. Demanding energy only creates more poverty. Demanding energy only creates more poverty consciousness, and lack of things to be grateful for. What we believe to be true moves through the lens of our mind as living energy and becomes the reality of our lives. If we believe ourselves to be limited, we get to be right about that. But it is not our ultimate truth. Mary Mann and Morrison. 
Drop your shields and embrace your abundant nature. The secret to feeling your abundant nature right now is to remove the walls blocking you from it. These walls are shields protecting your heart from getting hurt, conned, deceived, or abandoned again. Remove any shielding around your heart and imagine tossing it into a great bonfire. Let your armor melt away. If the shield feels like it is still there or coming back, simply invite the fire inside of you to consume your heart and any walls it has. Breathe deeply and physically open your arms wide, inviting this fiery purification to remove old defenses from your life. When you feel that old shields are removed, with several deep breaths, imagine pulling everything in the entire universe into your heart. All creation is pouring into your heart, the stars, the planets, earth, and all beings. Feel how truly abundant life really is. Proclaim you are an abundant being. One of the best ways to remain in the flow of abundance is to practice knowing that you are an abundant, infinite being that will never die. Since abundance is a flow of highly charged, positive, infinite energy, the more you open up, feel this energy, share it with others, the more you will naturally feel this abundance inside yourself. In the past, you may have partially closed the door to feeling this abundance due to past conditioning or scarcity thinking. To truly break this old programming for five minutes a day, do this exercise. Imagine opening your attention to all that surrounds you. Tune into the abundance of things, nature, people, on the planet, who are creating everything for you. They are giving you food, water, and all the pleasures that come with living in society. Feel this abundance of support around you now, letting it touch your very core. Let in the abundance of joy, pleasure, opportunities, and laughter into your heart. You are already deeply, eternally loved and will always be deeply, eternally loved by the abundance of the universe. Consciously open the door now and proclaim the truth to the universe by stating, I am a truly abundant being. Shout this message out over and over internally and externally until you feel that it has penetrated deeply into your soul. Become a channel of love for others. You can instantly become a channel for the highest vibration in this universe, love, by gifting your time spontaneously to someone who needs it. Now, here's a few ideas to get you going. Give a hug to someone lacking love. Share new inspirational ideas with others. Email someone that this inspiring information. Give presents to people just for fun and share something beautiful you have created, like music or poetry. You'll spontaneously feel better when you reconnect with this joy of giving freely. Just imagine what your world will be and feel like when everybody feels that there is an abundance of love, money, energy, and joy to share freely. Be the first to start the trend. All greed, fear, and lack will be eliminated when we all share freely from this truly abundant state. It will be impossible to feel poor at the end of the day, having given your love and light away. Do a random act of kindness every day. We invite you to do something sweet, kind, or super nice for someone, anyone, every day of the week. This one thing will cause you to step into being that bright, guiding light of abundant being that you are. 
perhaps it is sending someone a $5 bill, helping an elderly lady cross the street, paying someone else's toll, or moving your neighbor's lawn, mowing your neighbor's lawn. Practice giving something to everyone that you meet. Maybe it's a smile, <clears throat> a compliment, or a flower. If perhaps you feel shy and cannot do it for them, then do it for yourself. This is an opportunity to stop playing the small selfish game and start feeling more loving, abundant, and free. There are endless ways to share this kindness inside you, and each one will reveal this feeling of abundance inside. You'll soon see how easy it is to become a channel for abundance in your life. Gratitude is the golden key to swimming in the grand abundant river of life. When you start becoming a gratitude holic you become a channel of abundant flowing feelings for yourself and everyone around you. It doesn't take a lot at all. Take three minutes each morning. The moment you wake up and focus on the feelings of gratitude, what amazing things are you thankful for? Let a wellspring of thankfulness, relief, and joy to flow all over your body and inside you. Practice mastering gratitude this week by implementing the four exercises I just shared with you in any way you can. Practice which will help you lap and tap into your natural ability to channel abundance, into your life, into the lives of others. Now, everybody says that they know. They know how to do all that. They know, you know, it's hard to stay in gratitude. It's not, it's not easy to do this or do that. But it is. You're, you're aware that how you feel is what you attract. You see, that's not that's not complicated. How you feel now, we, we get we all can get caught in that that incessant uh, lower energy, frustration, irritability, anger, disappointment. You know all those things, and they can and then they pull us down because we end up attracting more of the same. In the middle of that, when you're cognizant and you say I'm not going to spend my energies in these lower vibrational frequencies I don't care to I'm going to focus right now this very moment on what I am grateful for this moves you out of those low frequencies instantaneously whenever you feel that pull right that heaviness pushing you down as far as frustration, whatever it may be, then you can immediately move into gratitude. What is it that I'm grateful what, what am I grateful for at this very moment? And it takes practice because literally the majority of us are used to going into lower vibrational frequency. Not that we do it on purpose, but we go in there. And we also don't realize that we are attracting more of the same. It's a cycle. It's endless. You ever notice that? You ever notice when you get frustrated? It, it's like a downward spiral. It, it becomes more and more. You become more irritable. You become more and more frustrated. You become more and more anxious. It builds. It keeps building. Before attracting that, the universe is giving us more of it. And when, when you, you are aware that you're in, in the gratitude stage, right, and you let go of the heaviness, the heavy frustration, ir ir you know, irritation, disappointment, 
you practice the higher vibrational frequency and you will attract higher vibrational frequencies. It is an absolute. It is an inevitability. It, it, it's not like, well, no, that won't take place. It is inevitable. And the more that you focus on gratitude, which is not, it isn't time-consuming or interruptive. You do it throughout the course of your day. It's like, you know, you, you have someone that says that, that they're not abundant, that they that they have a miserable life and it's always suffering and they're always scraping and trying to make ends meet. It's because that's what they believe. And that's what they manifest. It isn't, uh, there, there isn't anything out there that does this to you. It's you. It, it doesn't, it's all of us, we do it to ourselves. And it's, we don't, it's not like we do it on purpose. We are aware of it. Because it's, it's the, we, we are not connected to the God that we are. That's the main reason. And we're too involved with the body, the physical body. We're too involved with the material, physical world. We're in it. We're not spectators or watchers. We're in it. Now, obviously, when you, when, when you look at the material, physical world, you're going to say, man, is that ever busy or what? It is. Look at how much stuff out there. You know? People quick to jump to conclusions of negativity. Disappointment, frustration, irritability. And the reason is, is because we attach ourselves to the, to the material physical world and expect, expect certain outcomes. And when we don't get them, we lower our frequency. Because we get upset, we get irritated, frustrated. And, and we're the only ones that can shift that and change it. One of the most challenging things for any of us is to have total trust in the universe. Total faith and total trust, not only in the universe, but ourselves. So we know emphatically so that when we make a statement to the universe, we send a signal. This is what I want to have take place for me. And so we describe it and we give it to the universe and we let it go. But impatience, hurriedness, the ego mind's always there, remember, always trying to weed things. So you're immediately hurried, right? So you try to rush them. Then you get frustrated. Then they don't happen the way you thought they were or were going to happen or when they're going to happen and, you know, how long is this going to take and why hasn't this happened? I know some people that have intended certain things 30 years ago and still haven't experienced them. Okay? Then I know people who have intended certain things and they almost miraculously manifested within days. So when we, we begin to learn not to step in our own way, to stay out of our own way. And the challenge for us is, is to believe in the universe, trust the universe, trust ourselves. Don't doubt anything. And, and, and not be fixated on when. Not be fixated on when. Go about your day, go about your business, move forward, and not be stalled or held up on worrying, stressing, and fearing about when things will happen, when, you know, when is this going to happen, when am I going to have this, when am I going to have that. Because that's mostly the material, physical world. When we go within, 
we do not have those issues. So, we go into, we choose to, a place of silence. And we focus on relaxing our bodies. Most of the time we're not relaxed. You ever hear people say, well, you know, I need R&R for my R&R. And we, we just, we, we, many don't know how to relax their body. And there's really, truly only one way, and that's the breath. The body absorbs everything. It absorbs all kinds of things, all kinds of abuse. Worry, stress, fear, anger, anxiety, hurriedness, greed, revenge, all of these lower, dank, dark matter frequencies. And it stores all this stuff, the stress. Now, most of us don't know that we store the stress. And over a long period of time, in most cases, the, the, the biologics of the body begin to break down because it cannot handle the stress anymore. There's too much. So we focus on our breath, and, and it's an easy and slow inhale, almost natural, like your natural breathing, and it's an easy and slow exhale through the mouth. And when you focus on your breath and you listen to your breath, miraculous things happen. You move out of what? Yesterday and tomorrow. We move out of it. We put out six, over 60,000 thoughts a piece every day. We have tens of millions and billions of thoughts that fly by like clouds in the sky. These aren't even thoughts. They're more programs, and 99.999% of them are not ours. No, anyway, that's because of all that mind chatter and all that stuff going on. So we focus on the breath and we move into the now. And the ego mind does not exist in the now, neither does the subconscious mind. None of those thoughts we generate exist in the now. We become totally void, silent. We're not thinking. We really aren't participating in the ego mind. And its illusions. We're not replaying past experiences through the subconscious mind. It's all silence. Obviously, it takes some time to get adjusted to it, because we're used to the opposite. But to relax the body through the breath, and the body lets go of stress. You could carry stress for 50 years and not know it. Tell something biologically occurred. You could carry events in that body, right, that happened in previous lifetimes and not know anything about it. It's like a subconscious mind. We don't know that the subconscious mind records everything. It's not like you say, oh, subconscious mind, you're recording everything. But when we enter these baby bodies, we inherit all kinds of stuff. Well, what do we inherit? The ego, the mind, right? The subconscious mind. All the illusions. Inherit all of it. Stress, anger, fear, anxiety, material, physical world. And at first, it's superfluous. It doesn't, we're not engaged with it. We're imagining, creating, uh, fantasizing, enjoying our existence in little bodies. And as time goes by, what happens? We become formed 
molded, right? Designed. We, we take on our character, our personality, the body does, right? And so we, we have a certain way about us, each of us do. That is all absorbed. It's, it's not who you are. It isn't. It isn't even close to who you are. It's always about what? Understanding that the ego mind constantly is trying to control you. Every species, every civilization, for the most part, is controlled to a certain extent by the ego mind, which is an illusion. Once this civilization, like others before us have done, discover that we're all one, that we are not the body, that we are eternal and immortal, you will see a complete God-planet paradox and experience it. When you really think about separation, right, it's not fun, is it? It really isn't. How many of us are gravi- always are gravitating towards others? Not everybody, right? But I'd say about 99% gravitating towards others, interacting with others, socializing with others. Why is that? Why do we feel compelled to do that? It's because the gods we are within these bodies are one and are drawn to each other. Now, of course, we look at it from the physicality and, and the physical, biological form and not the God form. But that's why we have that draw to be together, period, to be around each other. Why do you think when you look at this planet and you see the clusters, right, the cities, the towns, the villages, always clustered for the majority of us, not all, but the majority like to be around each other. And it's not its not really a true understanding of why that is, but when you begin to contemplate it in meditation, you start to understand it's because we're one. The gods within these bodies are one, so therefore we are drawn to each other. And we're not talking about sexuality. We're talking way beyond that. The draw is the gods that we are as one. Because we're not separate. That's the irony of it. We're, none of us are separate. And the illusion, of course, with our eyes tells us that what? That we're separate. All things are separate. Because of how they appear. You ever notice that when you let go of things, now it doesn't mean that you consciously let go, but you just finally just say, you know what, the heck with it. And you say it with conviction through your heart. And you let something, you say, I think, you know, the heck with it. I'm done with that. And then things open up and things come into your life. Things that you had wanted to have come into your life, but for some reason never got there. But as soon as you relinquish or, or let go, and you're not giving up, you're just letting go. You're just saying, you know, I'm just not going to entertain that anymore. Now, when we look at where we go, right? Where where do we go? We we go to uh, the past, yesterday. We go to uh, tomorrow, the future, right? Okay. And we do that because why? Is it because we're bored? Do we feel, you know, it, it's boring to sit in the now, or is it just because of habit that we review things and we say, well, what's next? You ever notice when you have a problem, right? so we create our problems, but have you ever noticed that when you have a problem, whatever it may be, and it's on your mind a lot. You know, it's, it's, on, it's on you. It's on your mind. You're, 
you're looking at it and you're worried and you're trying to figure out how to not have the problem. And then you may say to yourself, there is a solution to every problem. So I must, I, I, I have, I will choose to discover the solution to this problem that's front that's facing me. Right. Not belabor it and, and not <laughs> give it more energy. But say, what's the solution to this problem? And I, and nine times out of ten, if not more, you'll discover the solution. And then you'll perform the solution and the problem will be gone. But what happens? As soon as we dissolve one problem, another one takes its place. You ever notice that? Sneaky at times. But another problem comes in. Something shows up, right? You say, well, I'm glad I'm done with that. That's out of the way. And, and inevitably another problem comes in. It's because that's, we attract that because we're conditioned to believe that we should always, and this sounds strange, we should always have problems. Problems are part of life. Right? So then when we start to realize when we leave the material physical world you know to itself and we move within and we say to it oh, I'm going to stay within and I'm going to focus on my breath and I'm going to stay in the now as much as I possibly can and I'm going to practice being in gratitude all the time every day every morning every night Every afternoon, I'm going to be practicing being in gratitude. It is the crucial gateway to connecting with the gods that we are within these bodies. It is the crucial gateway to the now, to focus only on the now. Now, we talk about in, in these meditations that we stand in front of three paths, right? And all of us are in the center path, which is the now. And we, we look at the center path, and there's three paths. There's yesterday and tomorrow, past, future, and the now. And we look at these, these uh, paths, and they're, the, the trees have formed a golden canopy over them, the shimmering golden leaves and branches and bark, and, and the path themselves are a brilliant emerald green flaming grass, right? And we look at them clear as a bell. And the one on the left, the one on the left, yesterday, past, is really worn. The one on the right, tomorrow, the future, is really worn. Why? Is because we are constantly being goaded by the ego mind to go into the past or the future and stay away from the now. Because the now, the one we're standing in front of, is brand new. It looks like it's never been used. The others are worn and tattered because the ego mind doesn't want us to be in the now because it doesn't exist in the now. That's as simple as it gets. It's an illusion created. The ego is an illusion created by the mind. The mind is an illusion that creates the ego to assist it. And it's always, it, it's, it's intent. It's how we intend. For, with, with ourselves. I'm going to stay in gratitude 24-7. I'm going to practice, practice, practice. I'll write it down on the wall next to my bed in front of the mirror. I will put it in my vehicle. I will constantly focus on gratitude. Doesn't it make sense, say, when we're standing in front of those paths and we all go into the past. We reminisce. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty common. And we, uh, we'll, we'll go into the past and review things. You know, oh, that was fun. I really had a good time. I'd love it. I wouldn't mind doing that again. I'd love to do that again. Well, I tried this at one time. It didn't work because of the way I tried it. So I'm going to see if I do it this way, if it will work. And you see, we have the subconscious mind, which is our, it's a great recorder. The subconscious mind records everything. It records all of our lives, 
over past lives, right? Over future, it, it recorded all of them. And it randomly placed them back. This is where you come into deja vu and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're doing something, you're somewhere, and you get this feeling comes over you. It's like it's plain as day and you say, I've done this before. I've been here before. And you know what? You have. And that's when the subconscious mind plays it back. The great recorder. So we, we, we go into the room, the great hall. We all have a great hall. It's filled with all forms of information, experiences, everything. We usually walk into a room, you may not be aware of it, but you, 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 you scan the ceiling and the walls very quickly. But when you walk into the great hall, you don't see ceilings or walls because it's so darn big. Go to drawers and, and shelves, uh, and you will pick out some movies and some books and pictures of your life experiences. And you'll go sit in an easy chair, and you'll see this big square rectangle floating, white rectangle floating in the, in the air. And you'll watch some of the movies, you'll read some of the books, and you'll look at some of the pictures, and you'll have a good time. Reminiscing. Referencing. But then you'll put it all away, you'll turn off the light, you'll shut the door, and you'll move forward in life. And on occasion, you'll revisit. Some of us, however, unconsciously will stay there so long that we end up taking the past, we bring it into a future that doesn't exist, we create the future, that future from that past, we relive that past in that future. That's why a lot of people will say no matter what we do, we always seem to end up here. We all go into the future. We're all, we're all poked and poked and get in, you know, in the future. You've got to find out things. you got to you got to seek external information. I need answers to my questions. i got to go find it out there, right? So the ego mind loves us to go, and of course, to go into tomorrow or yesterday and never into now. So we go into the future. And we seek external authority because we don't have the answers for ourselves, so we want someone to tell us what the heck's going on. And we have all kinds of sources. We have numerologists, we have astrologists, we have card readers, we have tea leaf readers, palm readers, clairvoyants, psychics, uh, pendulum readers, crystal readers. And so you go, let's say you go to a card reader, card reader lays the cards out, you ask a question, what would you like to know? Well, I'd like to know when I'd have, I'm going to have enough money to enjoy my life. A lot of people would like to know that, right? So they shuffle the cards and they start laying the cards out and they start turning the cards. We speed it up a little bit and they say, you're going to come into a large amount of wealth, money, in the next few weeks. It's going to be unexpected. It's going to come out of the clear book. I don't know the source, but it's definitely on its way. So, Depending on the response, you know, some people respond like it's a joke. They did it for the fun of it. They don't believe in any of that stuff. It never happens, right? Then you have the other person that goes to extremes, white knuckles it, and, and forms expectations and attachments, right? And it puts it in their calendar and counts the hours. The, the, the third person, you know, looks at it, is very happy and excited about it, brings it in, right, makes sure that it is as detailed and clear and concise as possible for the universe to begin the manifestation process, and sends it and lets it go. Really doesn't revisit it, maybe rarely, but it just leaves it alone. It, it isn't worried about the time, isn't worried about this, everything will take care of itself. The universe is absolutely perfection. The universe doesn't make mistakes. Finitely engineers everything. Always has your back. Always supporting you. Always taking care of you. Now, that person 
will receive the manifestation. The other two, maybe once in a great blue moon. Now, we, we look at each other, and we look at all objects and everything, and, and our interpretation is, is that separate from me? I'm the body. And there's a lot of people on this planet who believe they're the body, which is just temporary. And so and they say, well, I'm the body. They're in, in the external reality, and that's what, that's what they call it. And, and that's the yesterday and tomorrow. That's that path, yesterday and tomorrow. Tomorrow, yesterday, yesterday, tomorrow, tomorrow, yesterday. I've talked to a lot of people through the years that will say, I'm afraid to go within. I'm afraid. Why are you, why are you afraid? I'm afraid of what I might find. Just, just grown adults, business people, all walks of life. And they mean it. They're afraid to go within, which is silly. That's the ego mind interference, illusion. And that's why we talk about forgiving oneself, head to toe inside and out, beginning, you know, to love oneself and clean the cupboards, so to speak, get rid of the baggage and the things that you've been carrying with you that serve no greater good whatsoever. And then just begin, you focus on the breath, you stay in the now, you begin a new existence and awareness. Now, when we look at, when we look at all, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of people that believe that there, it, the only life, the only life, right, is us. There's no other species, there's no other civilizations, period. There's just us, okay? Some people believe that. But when you look at the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, Felines, the Reticuli, Nords, Greys, Anunnaki, Draco, Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, Avion, Ascended Masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Christ, Amoria, Medantia, Peltoth, Yahweh, Yeshua. When you look at all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, and earth, and beneath earth, because there are inhabitants in this planet. When you look at the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, ether, water, fire, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, these are all physical vessels that, hold, that house gods that experience those physical forms. That's it. It isn't complicated. And the interesting part about that is, is that once we discover that and understand it, right, then we begin to understand that we are all in one form. And we are all learning from each other through inhabiting other physical forms. Okay. How else are we going to learn about life? How else are we going to learn about the gods that we are? Inhabit physical forms, right? Experience those physical forms so that we learn. And it is a completely different understanding and perspective compared to what we have been trained to believe on this planet. If you knew emphatically, right, without a question, without even a smidgen of doubt, right to your heart core, that everything, that all of the physical forms house God,
gods that were part of the god that you are, would you cause them harm? Would you? Would you cause them harm? Would you ridicule them? Would you judge them based upon their physical form? I don't think so. I really don't think so. I don't think that that ego mind type of energy would even exist. Would even exist. When we look at this planet, not the bodies, the gods within them, and we say that we, we look at this planet and we, we, we since we're part of everything, right? We know that this planet has been violated, right? And that isn't even a question for us. So we look at the planet and say, let's unviolate it. Let's increase the vibrational frequency through the love that we are, the gods that we are. Let's saturate, permeate, and flood it indefinitely, infinity and beyond, with this love that we are. Knowing that the lower dark matter frequencies cannot survive, they can't hold their form, okay? And they vaporize, they vanish. They go into non-existence. And this is what we're doing. How many of us, hundreds of millions of us, consciously aware on and off world, and beyond that, countless others. Remember, we're all one. Consciously aware means that we know that we are of and from the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, the purest of purest, purest, eternal love. Now, obviously, we have parts of ourselves, the gods that we are, that are stone cold asleep. We deeply love them just as much as the parts of ourselves that are awake, the gods that we are. But doesn't it make sense that collectively, because we are one, we are collective, we determine the outcome of this planet. There, the, the, there, there is, we create everything around us throughout this galaxy, solar system, universe, and beyond. We manifest and create. We are supreme reality. There's nothing we need that we are not already containing. Period. Anything that occurs, the collective, the pure consciousness that we are all part of, is the creator. Heaven forbid, right, if we actually discover that we are this powerful. Why do you think that all the lower dark matter frequencies spend their entire existence trying to convince us of the opposite? That we're weak, insignificant, powerless. And you can tell to your heart mind that the consensus of the collective is we are beginning to embrace our power. And the, the, the statement has always been, you know, Gandhi made the statement a long time ago. Be the change you want to be. Be the change you want to have happen. And this is exactly what we're emulating. We're, we are the change that we want to see happen on this planet. We are the change that we want to see happen in this country. We are the change that we want to have happen. Be the change. That's what we're doing. Not complacency and withdrawal and negativity and 
and all of this stuff that we're, we have the power to conjure up, right? Instead of in, in, in focusing on our breath, being within, staying with them, being in deep gratitude 24-7, loving ourselves deeply and eternally, and then being able to do that with everyone. Forgiving ourselves well, for whatever we, we drag with us through this life and other lifetimes. Eliminate it. Let it go. Does it make any sense to any one of us that are awake to a certain extent that we would come to a planet to suffer? Yeah, we have fun and everything. On, you know, brief moments here and there. But for the most part, we end up suffering. Why would we do that? Every lifetime. Why in the heck would we do that? We wouldn't. We wouldn't. When you learn something, any of us, when we, when we learn something, whether it's a random experience or an intended experience, right? We learn, right? As children, we learn as well. But it, it, we, we learn it. We don't need to repeat it. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. We don't need to repeat it. Why would we repeat it 10,000 times? Okay? Doesn't make sense, does it? No, we need one run. We've picked up. We've learned. That's all we need. You know, let's enjoy our life. Let's, let's have abundance. Let's create the abundance that we are. Let's tap into this abundant universe. And, and experience the joy that we are. Experience all these wonderful things that we are within ourselves and God's that we are. We create things. Every split second could be crappy things, right, that we aren't aware of. Could be good things that surprise us. When we look at this planet, we're creating things. We create columns of light. We create fail-safes. We do have some amnesia. It's obvious. Not a biggie. So we create things to remind ourselves of the gods that we are within these bodies. Okay? We also create things to remind ourselves to be grateful for things. Period. We discover things. You see, you create, uh, we create us as one. We uh, connect. We move into full compassion. This is through the heart mind. Non-negativity. Non-judgment. Stillness of mind. Gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness. Bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're the light. We're the energy. We are the energy, the light, the love. Omnipotently powerful. So we, we can create a circle, a white fire light circle around the equator of this planet, which is love, pure love. And we set it, it it's set a fire, it is so bright that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. You could have a trillion suns bunched together and they would pale in comparison to our light. So we saturate, permeate, flood this planet and all life on it in and above and below. Infinity and beyond. Right? And we ascend. And as we ascend, we move into an ocean of glitter. The ocean of glitter is us. It's the gods that we are within these bodies. We discover this. It's part of discovery of who and what we are. 
We also understand that these reflective points are us, right? And we inhabit physical forms to teach each other things. And we're always giving each other messages without fail, all the time. It's just that there's many of us that are still attached to the material physical world. So we don't see it. But we begin to understand that even a bug in the rug is showing us something, period. Nothing is insignificant. Everything has meaning. Everything has meaning. The universe makes no mistakes. It's perfectly engineering everything. There is no random. It is all perfectly designed for all of us. So anything that crosses your path, person, human, right, being, comes into your life, 20 seconds, changes your life. Uh, cat, dog, bird in the sky flying over you, right? Butterfly fluttering in front of you. All of these things are subtle messages. Some of them are pretty unsubtle. They're pretty right in your face. But a lot of them are just subtle messages. What's the meaning of that? See, it, what, why does it focus us? What does it do? It focuses on us on the now, the moment. You immediately switch to the moment, the very interaction. It helps us stay in the now. All of the other gods and all of the other physical forms help are, we're helping each other stay in the now. The moment, moment to moment. Now we're met with the different columns of lights that we create to remind us of things since we have this amnesia. We have Archangel Raphael carrying what? An omnipotently powerful Emerald green, flaming, healing light. This is there to remind us, the gods, that we are in these bodies, that we are the power of healing these bodies. Then we have Archangel Michael. He comes in carrying the violet, blue, purple, flaming light. This is created to remind us all, the gods, that we are in these bodies, of our omnipotent power, strength, and result. Then we have the white fire. This is created to remind us all that from head to toe, inside now, 24-7, infinity and beyond, we are protected from all lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, souls who have taken on too much darkness, pure evil, infinity and beyond, no possession, no attachment, no low energies. As long as we maintain this vibration, this frequency. We're good to go. But only you, you, you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, through hatred, anger, greed, fear, worry, stress, revenge, manipulation, dishonesty, You will lower your vibrational frequency enough so, allowing all lower dark, creating a breach in our white fire armor, allowing all lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Now, <clears throat> then, attachments and possessions and all kinds of unpleasantries can occur. Now, if you decide to do this, consciously or unconsciously, you are immediately met with fail-safe that we create, the gods that we are. And the first one is a double column of light. First part of the column of light is the purple transmuting flame. It reminds us that we bring in the purple transmuting flame. We transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. Second part of the column of light is the violet ray. 
This reminds us that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame, cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire army, restoring our vibrational harmony to the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest, eternal love, gratitude, We're then met with the golden light, pink light. This is a column of light that we, the gods within these bodies, created to remind us all that we are the sun, the sunlight, the rain, the rainbow. We are the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams. The sun sets and the sun rises, the clouds in the sky. We are the trees and the forests and the soils and the animals. We are everything and everything is us. Now, those, those that are, are still in the bicameral mode and still seeking external reality, physical, material world, We'll look at a sunset or a rainbow and say, this is very beautiful. I, 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 I get a picture of this. Right? They view it as separate. Those of us who are awake and know that we're not the body and that we are the God, be the heart, mind, we will look at the same thing and say, that is the God that I am. That is the God that I am. Now, we continue to ascend. We come into contact with this massive crystal light tower. We, the gods in these bodies, created this tower. Larger than the solar system and beyond. In the center of the column, we discover this massive oblong sphere. The center of the sphere is a golden white ball of light. In turn, the golden white ball of light is surrounded by Numerous multicolored rings of light that seem to go to infinity and beyond. This creates a super bright, misty white cloud, sparkling, reflecting. It's absorbed through our heart mind, and it feels like a warm embrace that never ends. We then discover that the golden white ball of light is the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, the purest of the purest purest, Eternal love, gratitude, well-being, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, massive prosperity, massive abundance. And all of this is a reflection of the gods that we all are in these bodies. At the top of this tower, we created it, the gods that we are, so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees, infinity and beyond, saturating, permeating, and flooding all life, the highest supreme value in the universe. We are drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. What is the golden ocean? Pure, deep, eternal love. And we're flooding and saturating and permeating this planet with it. It isn't temporary. It is infinity and beyond. It will not cease. It will increase. Now, the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. We, the gods in these bodies, created this sphere over four years ago. It is moving towards 1,900 meditations in perpetual motion. Hundreds of millions of us on and off world, consciously aware creating these meditations seven days a week every day for over four years. Almost four and a half years. This is massive. These meditations continue to intensify, grow, and expand. 
the, the, the sphere continues to grow, intensify, and expand. It can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And we can plug into it as the gods that we are, in the now, anytime we choose through the breath. And what, what, what do we see? We're floating, right? We're not participating. We're not judging. We're watching. And we, we've created an atmosphere of a golden, white, pink, shimmering light. It's everywhere, right? Sky, everywhere. We walk through it, float through it, bathe in it. Pure, deep, eternal love. Highest of the highest I'm vibrational frequencies. So we see this goop. It's being evacuated from the planet. Everywhere. Pure evil. Rogue AI goop. Souls who have taken in too much darkness. Lower dark matter, five matter frequencies. All ev being evacuated from the planet and being evaporated through this golden white pink light. As soon as it makes contact, it evaporates. It becomes nothing. It's transmuted into neutralized substance. It is sent to the pure consciousness collective where it is no more. And this is what's happening on this planet. This is the transposition. And we are the ones who have created the change that we want to have happen on this planet, in this now. If we look beyond our physical existence, we'll soon discover the subtle realms and experience the infinite quality of our souls. Take a single glimpse into that, what is beyond this physical 3D world. It will reveal everything you need to know. Let something higher from the beyond enter you. For at least five seconds, at least 20 times randomly today. Allow yourself to feel the subtle energy inside your physical body. Tune into that emotional and super subtle energy you feel vibrating within your being. Get curious about what it is like and where it is coming from. Or join you in the meditation and return to close us out.
takes an easy, slow breath in through the nose. And an easy, slow breath out of the mouth. Be still. Do not do your ordinary daily routine today. Instead, mix it up. Do something completely out of the blue. Could be small. It's up to you. Jump in this extraordinary moment of your life. Now is where you discover that you are divine consciousness. Relax. Don't be anywhere special. Being nowhere is the greatest thing you can do to start being now, here. Take this with you for the rest of the day and through the evening, night, and following morning. We will return here Wednesday, July 27th, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call and 9 p.m. Eastern to continue our time for change. 